Hey everybody, what's up? It's your friend James Shaw. I trust you're doing okay. We are doing what we do, which is talking to amazing agents who are doing amazing things. We're going to do that today with my friend Heidi. How are you, Heidi? I am fantastic. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, where you're from. Truth is, you're from down the road. We could do this interview in person, but it's just easier to do it this way. Introduce yourself to everybody. Hello, my name is Heidi Joy, and I am from the land of the great James Shaw. Um, <laughs> we live in the same county, Pinellas County. We serve Clearwater, Tampa, St. Pete, and of course, the lovely town of Safety Harbor. It's a great town, and uh, you have a great business. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is how you got extremely purposeful in uh, who you work with and, oh. and kind of the journey that you went through for that to get very purposeful in it. Uh, people know you around this county for doing luxury, and that was a purposeful decision that you made. So we're going to talk about that first, but but you've been in the business for a while. This is not a new thing for you. Tell us about your business and then how it's evolved over time. Yes, I have been doing this for quite some time, uh, 25 years-ish. Um, started out um, in my, right around, right around my 30th birthday. Um, one of those strategic decision moments that I needed to figure out what I wanted to be when I grow up and um, jumped in both feet, you know, all of the Keller Williams things that were available back at that time. And um, I remember in the beginning, they said, you know, you got to do this 411 thing. And I'm like, oh, great. Who can I do that with? I want to do that with Nikki. She's the leader of the band. So I've always kind of put myself in front of the most strategic people I could. So I had the honor of being coached by Nikki my first year in business. And you're um, talking about Nikki Ubaldini for those of you like, what Nikki are you talking about? Is that Nikki right? Ubaldini, yes. Yeah, um, right. You know, back, back when she and Gary were starting Keller Williams in, in Pinellas County. Um, and, you know, back before Rookie of the Year was a thing, I was Rookie of the Year. Um, and then I went into business with a partner, um, stayed with that partner for a long time. Um, that partnership ended in 2018. And up to that point, um, we made the decision to leave KW. And we went to a local independent and business never grew. And came back in 2017, and I'm um, so grateful to be back with KW. I had my my stent at at another at another spot, and um, and then in 2018 that partnership ended, and I had to start over. Um, had to start over in a lot of ways. Um, that partnership. You said also it was one of the worst the, years of your life, right, Heidi? Did you say this is one of the 2018 was one of the toughest years of your life? Uh, it was a total reset in many, many ways, right? Um, I picked up and I moved. Um, and I moved about 30 minutes south of where I had lived and raised my daughter and was ingrained in the community. And James, honestly, I could have I could have moved to Kansas. I could have moved to Key West. I could have moved anywhere because I would have known the same amount of people. Hmm. So you had um, to start this business over from scratch in this reset for you. It was it was starting over. So how did you do that? How did you how did you kind of I don't know re re rebirth this business? So again, 2018 horrible. Um, 2018 holidays are coming in. You know, kind of the season that we're in right now. That as we're recording this, I don't know when this is going to air, but you know, I didn't want to participate in the holidays in any way, shape or form. So I made a decision to go to Miami um, to a luxury certification course that was required by KW Luxury at that time to be a member. Um, you had to have the production and you had to have this certification. So I, I went and um, I happened to be sitting in that class with a friend of yours, Jana Caudell. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it takes me, it takes me all the way back to the beginning when um, I first started in the business and there was this group of agents in, in a group called Star Power. And I was inspired there year one because that coach that I had 
Nikki Ubaldini told me <laughs> that if you don't do anything else this year in year one, you need to go to the Star Power Conference. This is before KWU. This is before any of the education that we have now. And I went and I looked at those people on that stage and I'm like, if they can do it, I can do it. And I ran into Gina at this class and I'm like, what the heck are you doing here? Like, you're so successful and whatever, but she was trying to launch her luxury business in Naples. And I'm like, if she can do it. I can do it. I got that fire again. Yeah. And it was, it was birthed at the end of 2018 when I didn't really want to participate in the holidays. So I participated in business mm. and I had an amazing January, right? Cause I was busy and purposeful in December. Yep. And, um, funny, funny, not funny. Um, when I moved, I moved into this little rental house. It was like a thousand square feet. It was not luxury. <laughs> um, very sad, depressing little place for, mm -hmm. for me to be and moved out of my big house, lost all of my things, turned 50. It just was a shitty year. Let's just call it what it was. But that was also the place that the transformation began. And my landlord of this little house has become my best client. She's probably mm. done close to $40 worth of business with me since, um, 40 million, her. 40 million. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's pause real quick because there's a lot to unpack right here. So I want to walk through it. First of all, when things get hard, right, we can withdraw or we can move forward. You did a little bit of both. You started with draw some, but then you said, no, wait a minute. I'm going to go all in on learning. So first thing you did, you go to an event and you've always been dedicated to that. You've been going to Star Power since, I mean, Howard was leading it and doing all the stuff and all those things. And, 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 then, and then you go to another event. You run into someone who you respect. I worked for Jana Caudell. I was on her team in Indiana. And, um, and you, you run into Jana, Hey, if you can do it, I can do it. Like, again, you see these mentors that are succeeding and yet you're struggling. Truth is inside things are hard for you. You're going through a divorce. You're rebuilding the business. You moved away. And yes, you've moved out of your big house and into this tiny little rental. And it could have been one of these things that woe is me, that everything is horrible and, and nothing's great. But instead, I love what you did. You just start, you just check in with your landlord who knows you're a real estate agent knows you don't own a home because you're living in one of her investment properties and you just build relationship and it turns into $40 million. Is that the key to any business, Heidi, is building relationship? For me, it has been. I mean, I know everybody does it differently, but I am a relational person um, and that's how I've always built business, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's a $50,000 one bedroom condo or it's a sandcastle on the beach. It's for me, it's built through relationships. Yeah, I love it. And by the way, you have a lot of them because we can hear all your notifications going off while we're doing this interview. A lot of people want to hear from you. So it's totally cool. Uh, so then you made the decision to get purposeful about luxury. You wanted to raise the price point, right? If I rate, if you raise the price point, then you kind of raise your dollar per hour opportunity. So tell us how you got tactical about that. Another kind of strategic decision for me. Um, I didn't have the bandwidth or the capacity within myself to build the team to re to go through all of that again. I just I just didn't. Um, so I'm like, okay, I got to do it first, and I went to this class. I went all in on luxury. I went to anything and everything luxury education wise that, that you possibly could. And I completely rebranded, um, everything, um, because people needed to know me as me, right? Just me. And it's funny this morning, we were talking about word of the year. Um, my word that year was joy. I changed my name everything became about joy and it's worked out pretty well marketing wise. Yeah, it was a smart move. Okay. So you got just purposeful about your message, purposeful about your branding. Tell us how you got purposeful in building relationships with luxury clients. One relationship at a time, you know, people think that you can cask this wide net and you're going to scoop, you're going to scoop all this stuff. in. that was not my experience. I had to go, I had to go one by one and Honestly, I kind of went old school because that was the only thing I knew how to do. Like, I'm not super techie. I don't know how to run Facebook ads. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, but I do know how to build relationships. Um, I held luxury open houses. I 
got real strategic with the people that I met that were high net worth. And what's everybody's favorite thing to talk about? Their house. Themselves. Their yeah. Themselves, right? So there's nothing more honoring to somebody of high net worth when you ask them how they built it, right? Um, so I would ask all kinds of business questions because most, you know, most of the people that I had come across, they were, you know, they had built their their net worth. It wasn't given to them. They didn't win the lottery. Um, and those began some fascinating conversations. And I learned about where they were from, what they liked. And, you know, I, I don't have a great memory and I would have to come home from these meetings and I would take all kinds of notes and I would I would save it. And then when I came across something that I felt like potentially would work for them, because remember, not they're not always, oh, I need to buy a house. They're, they can be very Im impulsive in their purchases. Um, and when I would come across something, I, it would be a reason for me to call and have that conversation. And that's how things started to snowball one relationship so at a time. So you're paying attention. First of all, you're being purposeful about who you're meeting. Uh, next, you're asking really smart questions. And I, and I love you just taught me, right? They want to talk about themselves and figure out what can you learn from high net worth people that that they want to teach you, they want to help you. It helps you become a better business person because you're learning strategies and tips from these successful people, but you're also building relationship with them. Then you do a key thing, go take notes, put it in whatever database system you're using, whether it's a notebook or command or something in between, it doesn't matter, but you take notes. And then when something pops up, you think might interest them, you connect back out. Uh, this is like building relationship 101, Heidi, and so many people don't do it. Why do you think that is? I have no idea. I can't speak for other people. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, it. It. It's just. It, it's a natural way. It's a natural way for me. And one of the questions, depending upon what kind of personality that you're talking to, I did this and I did that and I made all this money and blah blah blah. And I'm great. Tell me about your failures. Like certainly, you have not always won every single time you stepped outside of your house. I want to learn too about your failures, and then I would hear these stories because I have failed every which way to Sunday and continue to do so on a daily basis. And I learn, I feel like I learn more from other people's failures and my own than I do my own wins. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. That, that's a, Write that down, folks that are watching. You're saying you learn more from your failures and other people's failures than you do from your wins. That is so true. Because there aren't any real lessons in wins. I mean, we can ask, well, what did I do well that works so I can do it again? But the true lessons are learned when we don't reach our goals and we continue to repeat those until we learn them, right? So we'll continue to make those same mistakes until eventually we learn from them. That's, a, that's really powerful. Um, so I imagine you've learned some really smart things from others. Now, the other thing you've done is you said you, in addition to learning from high net worth people about what's worked and what hasn't, but you also studied other luxury brands so that you could have an understanding about what might be appealing there. What's important about that? Well, for me, I had, again, I'm an education junkie, not for the sake of just learning, but if I'm gonna come in and present confidently, I have to come from a confident place. And I think it was in 2019, um, Brady Sandall, who is, I know I'm name dropping like crazy today, but these are people who have influenced me, um, was doing this private little class. This was before he was the, the director of luxury um, in Seattle, Washington. And I flew across the country and went to this little class. He had just um, completed the Ritz Carlton symposium. And that's all about the customer experience and all of those kinds of things. And what a great place, what a great place to learn. And I love little small intimate rooms. Um, and he and I walked around that day and he took me to Nordstrom's, um, which is another luxury brand. And that was the very first store that he offered to work in for free so that he could learn and study the Nordstrom way. Um, so I'm a big fan of both of those places. And, uh, you know, when you go to the Ritz Carlton, it's different than when you go to 
a Weston or a Marriott, there's there's little nuances that are that are different that they've strategically built in. Um, and I want to show up in that in that same manner when I'm when I'm with my clients. One thing I think is interesting that you just brought up is that so if you look at Marriott as a brand, and so you mentioned a JW, a Marriott, and a Ritz. So this is all in the Marriott umbrella, but different all properties. Fun, right. Mm -hmm. Um and, and each experience is is different in a way. But but truly, like let's let's take a JW and a Ritz. While they're certainly different, they're small differences, Heidi. These are, these are we talk about all the time, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is extra. And it's just kind of going the extra inch or so. But studying that and knowing what the extra inch is seems to be really important here when you want to connect with the luxury clientele, right? Well, and I will take that to a money perspective. Um, three hotels side by side. I've got to be over here. One is this, this, and this, and one of them is a Ritz Carlton. If it's a little bit more, I'm staying there because I yeah. know what I'm going to get when I get there. Right. right. The door is going to fly open. They're going to say, welcome, Miss Joy. They're going to escort me to the desk. And I know what each moment of that experience is going to be like. I know that I'm going to get something in my room that's hand addressed to me. Um, and I don't know. I work really hard. I like being waited on. <laughs> yeah, like I love it. it well, it's uh, Brittany Hodak's book, Creating Superfans, talks about that. That that eighty six percent of people will pay more for a better experience, and you're you're talking about that. Same comes true and for us as real estate agents. They'll pay us for a better experience. Yeah, and especially high net worth people will pay right. more. Right. And there's this misconception. I, I think, and I've, I've seen it and I've heard of it when I've been in these luxury classes, when there's somebody new in the room, there's this misconception that you're going to have to discount your oranges because we're not allowed to use the C word, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get less oranges there. Um, and that's not true. That's yeah. not true. A high net worth person is used to paying professional fees at market rates. But they can smell out who's not a professional. So it's up to you to study, do the work, and put in the effort. Um, I've often believed, and I've known it from my experience, I'm sure from yours as well, that actually a higher net worth person is is easier to work with than than a more traditional buyer or seller. We think it's going to be the other way around, but but you tell me, they tend to be less demanding, not more demanding. They they know what their expectations are, and if you meet them, you're good but they're not coming back to you all the time for stuff. They're kind of letting you do your thing. Uh, would, would that be true that, that, that that's one of the things that's different about luxury is that really it's just another zero on the, on the price point or maybe two more zeros. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. It is. And they respect your time and they respect you as a professional if you show up that way. Um, and, they're they're more thankful. They're they're just more appreciative. They're my experience is that they that they are lovely. Now, are there some folks that are not? Yes. And guess what? I have the right to choose to not do business with them. It's okay. Yeah. If I think somebody's going to be difficult or a problem, um, then I can say, you know what? I I appreciate you, but I'd rather part now as friends than let you down later. And what? Well, here's my boundaries, right? And like you either work in my boundaries or you don't, and that's okay. Yeah, that's good advice. What advice would you give somebody that wants to raise their price point, that wants to get more engaged in the luxury market? Well, does, don't you think everybody does? Yes. Like everybody says that all the time. And I and I love <laughs> I love how when someone discounts me, um, because <laughs> Oh, well, uh, yeah, of course you you did that. Your price point's higher. Well, I made that happen, right? Like I did that on purpose. Um, there's plenty of things around here that are not at, at that price point. And we do still help everyone. Um, it's not certainly not just luxury. Um, but for me, it started with a decision. That's you have to make a real decision, not, hey, I just want to sell more expensive homes. Make that decision to commit. That's where you start. 
Step two. And then put in the work. Yeah. Well, step yeah. two. All right. I want to, I am, I'm all in now. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Do I know what I need to know to compete at that level? Probably not. Um, you know, I had to go learn things that quite honestly, at 20 years in the business, I should have known. I didn't know what the difference between a $2,500 stove and a $30,000 stove was. I didn't yes. know. They both make right. the turkey. You know, I can laugh <laughs> at myself. Like I had to go, <laughs> I had to go learn stuff. Yes, um, no I doubt. Needed to, I needed to understand waterfront better. I needed to understand seawalls and docks and all of the things that we have here in the Tampa Bay area. I didn't, I wasn't proficient in that. I didn't have yeah. a yacht in my backyard. Right. Um, <laughs> had a mosquito ditch. Um, so I had water. <laughs> so you have to go learn what you don't know so that you can confidently speak for me. I'm only speaking yep. for myself. And that, that took going to a lot of luxury things that took spending time with people who were doing more than me. I yep. loved, I loved what you, what you were talking about this morning too. Like you have, all of these MREAs on this call, and you asked how many of them are approached on a daily basis, and not many of because two people are too afraid to talk to that yeah. person. No, yeah. I've never been that way, right? Right. Because if you yeah. if you lead with, oh my gosh, I want to know about you, that's their favorite topic to talk mm -hmm. about. Yep. Um, not fix my not hi, I'm here, we fix my problem. Correct. Um but I want to learn about you. How did you do this? How do you do this now? What's the what's the biggest thing that's working for you today? Mm -hmm. You're learning. Uh, I'm proud of you. I'm uh, the journey you've been on the last handful of years is is pretty cool. Uh, you're a great agent. Uh, you're very learning based, and it's showing up. And the success is huge. I know uh, in 2023, what you capped in a day, you did 13 million in a day. No, I had a thirteen million a week. I did cap in a, a thirteen day. million dollar a week. My story is better, but that's fine. Thirteen million in a week <laughs> is still amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm proud of you, Heidi. Thanks for sharing with us today. Thanks for being on here. Congratulations for what you do, and I wish you all the best. Have a great 2024 as well. Thank you. You got it. Bye, everybody.